In this video, we will walk through an example problem and show how to choose current limiting resistors for a circuit with multiple LEDs in parallel. There are other videos earlier in this series linked in the description of this one, where we show how to do this for a circuit with a single LED, along with calculations for the power and efficiency of the circuit. So you might wanna check those out before you jump ahead to this more advanced circuit with multiple LEDs. Again, you can find all of them linked in the description of this video. In those earlier videos, we saw that the equation to choose a resistor value for a single LED with a known battery voltage and known forward voltage drop across the LED, which depends on the LED's cover, color, excuse me, is the battery voltage minus the LED voltage divided by the desired current through the LED. Since the resistor is in series with the LED, we know that the current through them must be the same. So you can derive this equation by applying Ohm's law to the resistor. I do that in one of the earlier videos. I'm not gonna redo it in this video. We're just going to start out taking this equation as a given. Now, this process is actually pretty simple for multiple LEDs because it's no different than doing it for a single LED. Since all of the branches of this circuit are in parallel, the voltage drop over them is just equal to the battery voltage. So we can just apply this equation separately to each branch of the circuit to solve for the individual current limiting resistor value for each LED, as long as we know the forward voltage drop across that LED. So if you have LEDs with different voltage drops, for example, if you were using different colors, you can choose the resistor value for each one to get the current that you want. So let's go through an example with some numbers. We'll say that we have a six volt battery and we have three LEDs, each with a rated current of 20 milliamps, but we have different colors, so we have different voltage drops. For example, a red LED with a voltage drop of two volts, a blue LED with a voltage drop of four volts, and then three volts, which is going to be a color somewhere in between. And we want to solve for the three resistor values to get 20 milliamps through each of these LEDs. We are going to do that, again, just by applying this equation to each branch of the circuit separately. So for resistor one, for the red LED, we have R equals the battery voltage minus the LED voltage, two volts divided by the desired current of 20 milliamps converted to amps here for this equation. That is going to give us a 200 ohm resistor. For resistor R2, we have again the battery voltage minus the LED voltage divided by the desired current of 20 milliamps or 0 0.02 amps. That gives us a 150 ohm resistor. And then finally, R3 for the blue LED, we have six volts minus the LED voltage, LED voltage drop of four volts divided by the current gives us a 100 ohm resistor. So we see how we wind up with different res resistor values for each of the LEDs because of those different voltage drops. And as we covered in more detail in some of those earlier videos, you also need to double check your resistor power ratings to make sure you are not exceeding the power rating of your resistor. You can do that using the equation P equals I squared R. So in this case, that's going to be 0 0.02 amps squared times 200 ohms, which is going to equal 0 0.08 watts or 80 milliwatts, which is less than 250 milliwatts or the one quarter watt power rating that is pretty common for many resistors. So in this case, you can see from the equation, this is the biggest resistance. And we know that the current is gonna be the same for each resistor because again, we have 20 milliamps through each of these branches. So if I plug in a smaller value for R here, I'm just gonna get an even smaller value for the power. So if you want to, you can go through and do this calculation for each resistor to prove this to yourself that it's going to remain less than a quarter watt, but I'm not gonna show the calculations in this video, otherwise you can just take my word for it that each of those powers is going to be below this limit because we already checked it for the largest resistor. Although note that that only applies if you chose the same current for each branch. If we had a higher current LED, say for example, 30 or 40 milliamps in one of these branches, then you would need to redo this calculation to double check the power for that resistor. Something else we covered in the earlier videos, resistors are typically only available in certain values. And while you can combine resistors in series and parallel to get different, more exact values, 
usually you just want to simplify your circuit and only have one resistor. So for example, we might have a resistor kit that does not have a 200 ohm resistor handy, but we might have a 220 ohm resistor available, which is a common size. So if we were going to actually build the circuit with a 220 ohm resistor, we can calculate the actual current through the LED by rearranging this equation to solve for the current. So that gives I equals battery voltage minus the LED voltage over the resistor value. The battery voltage and the LED forward voltage drop remain unchanged. That's six volts minus two volts. But now we are dividing by 220 ohms and that is going to give a current of about 18 milliamps. So that's not ma that much less than 20 milliamps. You could look at the LED and see if there's not actually any perceivable difference in brightness, then maybe that's not a problem and you can just run the LED at 18 milliamps instead. Or if say that number came back a lot lower, say less than 10 milliamps and the LED was actually too dim, then you would need to redesign your circuit to get that back up closer to 20 milliamps. Again, we kind of covered this in more detail in one of the earlier videos, so that was quick, but you can go check out the earlier video linked in the description of this one for a more detailed walkthrough of that process of solving for the current when you have a known resistor value. Finally, you might want to calculate the power provided or used up or dissipated by different components in your circuit and calculate the overall efficiency, or in other words, how much electrical energy provided by the battery is actually converted to light output by the LEDs. So you can calculate the percentage of overall power dissipated by the resistors. I'm gonna write that as percent power sub R for the resistors. That is going to be the sum of all of the individual resistor powers, so sigma for the sum signal, sum symbol, excuse me, PR over the battery power. So in this circuit, since we have those three resistors, that's gonna be the power of resistor one plus the power of resistor two plus the power of resistor three, all divided by the battery power. Electrical power in general is P equals IV, so for this circuit you can calculate the power supplied by the battery by plugging in the battery voltage here and the total current drawn from the battery, which in this case is going to be the sum of these individual currents. Remember that voltages are the same in parallel, but currents add in parallel. So in this case, we have 20 milliamps coming down each of these branches separately, that means that is going to add up to a total of 60 milliamps drawn from the battery. That is actually one of the disadvantages of this configuration with having the LEDs in parallel as you wind up drawing, in this case, three times more current from the battery than you would if you would put the LEDs in series so they all had the same current and you were only drawing 20 milliamps from the battery. So this is going to drain your battery faster. For the resistors, you can calculate the power using P equals IV. You can also substitute Ohm's law into that equation and write it as P equals I squared R or P equals V squared over R. So depending on which variables you know, you can calculate the power for the resistors, plug those in here, and then calculate the overall percentage of power dissipated by the resistors in the circuit. I'm not going to plug in numbers and walk through the example in this video. We have an example about that linked in one of the previous videos in the series, again, shown in the description of this video. For the overall efficiency of the circuit, or again, how much of the input electrical energy from the battery is converted to light, we have the power of all of the LEDs. So if we have more than one LED, you're gonna to have to add that up, divided by the battery power, but then we need to throw in an extra efficiency factor for the LEDs themselves because LEDs don't convert 100% of the electrical energy to light. They also dissipate some heat. And I'm just gonna put in a rough factor of 0.5, but it'll depend on your specific LEDs. You can try to look it up on the data sheet, although the data sheet might not always have it. So again, I am not going to go through an example by plugging in all the numbers here because we do that in an earlier video, but in this case, that would be the power for the first LED plus the power for the second LED plus the power for the third LED, all times that factor of 0.5 divided by the battery power and the power for the LEDs is going to be equal to 
IV as well. You can't use this Ohm's Law form for LED because Ohm's Law does not apply to LEDs. You need to use the IV form just like you do for the battery. You also know that due to conservation of energy, the power provided by the battery has to be equal to the sum of all of the power dissipated by the individual LEDs plus the sum of all of the power dissipated by the resistors. So if you know the battery power and you've al already calculated the total resistor power, you can calculate the total LED power using this equation and just plug that in here directly and then you do not need to calculate the power of each LED individually. In the final video of this series, we will look at what happens when you put these LEDs in series instead of in parallel. Again, you can find that video and all the others linked in the description of this one.